and as soon as we have people here I'll start explaining what we're doing because there's a bit of catching up because I had not planned to um, stream this but it's just too cool it came out just too well Ha, why are so many things underlined with red? Because the last thing I did before going out for a, for work was trying to set it up so that it's not um, build tag they could ignore, and it's actually in its own sub-module. Uh, why a sub-module? Well, um, this is my the module we're working on. It's my Edwards 25519 library, which is um, uh, basically complete rewrite at this point by uh, me, uh, George Tankersley, and Henry de Valence of the um, uh, crypto at 5519 internal Edwards 5519 library. And something very nice about it is that this is its go mod. It's empty. Um, and I don't want to change that for dependencies that at runtime. Uh, so what is uh, what is happening is that I was making a sub module and probably got that wrong. Hmm, that should work. So let's see what's going on here. There are two separate um, um, folders in the workplace so that um, so that Gopals is happy with them. Yeah, I just had opened the wrong uh, the wrong file. So now it should be fine. I don't remember what's in here. Ah yes. Okay. So first things first, uh, I'm going to push the branch I have now so that people can follow along. The um, repository is uh, GitHub Filosottile uh, Edwards 5519, and we're going to push this as the AVO uh, branch. Great. Yes. Yubiki agent made an appearance. <laughs> okay. So here's what we were doing. Uh, we are taking the an implementation of multiplication, uh, which is multiplication of two large numbers, so large um, field elements, uh, we call them, that are so large that they don't fit within any um, primitive type. Instead, uh, we know that they are always uh, smaller than 255 bits because they are numbers modulo, the number 2 to the 255 minus 19. Uh, Edwards 25519 comes from there. It's the numbers, the, the base field is the numbers module 2 to the 255 minus 19. So we take that number, which is 255, um, uh, 255 and we divide it into five, um, five pieces of 51 bits, bits each. So this value counts as itself. This value is multiplied by 2 to the 51, this one by 2 to the 102, this one by 2 uh, the, to the 153, this to the um, 204, and that way we can split the bits, these 255 bits, equally over these five limbs. And then we can do the um, uh, operation uh, operations over these uh, numbers split over the, all of these uh, limbs. Cool. 
So that's what we're working on. Now, the generic code that does that is this. I've um, It was originally written by George Tankersley and I recently uh, reworked it uh, with some more comments. So, you know, we just take the... Uh, we're trying to multiply i a times b. And how it works is exactly like pen and paper columnar multiplication that you've learned in uh, uh, elementary school. Um, so, you know, you take a0, which is the lowest 51 uh, bits, uh, and a1, a2, a3, and you multiply them by b0, b1, b2, b3. In columnar multiplication, as we learn it, uh, we do that with... Um, um, we, we do that with digits, while here we do the, we do it with very large digits. Instead of 0 to 9, the digits are 0 to 2 to the, to the 51 minus 1. Uh, or at least that's the easiest uh, way to think about it. Um, there's also the, the option to have overlapping, um, overlapping uh, amounts, but let's not think about that for a second. So how we do it is the very much what we learned in uh, elementary school. A0 times B0, here. A1 times B0, here. A2 times B0, here. And then we, you know, we do the whole row, then we indent by 1, and then we do A0 times B1, here. A1 times B1, here. You got the drill. Uh, now, the very cool thing about doing uh, math module 2 to 255 minus 19, is that it's very close to doing it modulo 2 to the 5, 5. If it was modulo 2 to the 2, 5, 5, these numbers we could just ignore because they just overflow and overflow neatly. Uh, so the final result, once we go around the modulo, all of these would disappear. But it's not modulo 2 to the 2, 5, 5 uh, minus 19. Is uh, in two to five five is modulo two to two five five minus nineteen. So every time that we overflow two to two five five, we went nineteen over the number. So all of the numbers that end up overflowing, we need to multiply by nineteen and move back at the beginning. This is what we call the reduction identity. One of the coolest thing of uh, implementing cryptography, uh, and it says that if you have something like this, a times 2 to the 2, 5, 5 plus b, when it's modulo 2 to the 2, 5, 5 minus 19, you can rewrite it as a times 19 plus b. So every time we go around, we overflow, instead of, you know, just losing one of carry, we bring all the way back 19. Okay, so how that looks like in practice is that we take this and we move it back here, multiplied by 19 and it's what we did here and then we take you know these two and we move them here and that's what happened here uh, if you're not following this don't worry it's not necessary to understand the cool assembly rewrite part that uh, we're doing uh, later um, with um, with Avo. but um, this is just to give you an idea of what we're doing so at the end, uh, the, the last uh, step was uh, just add, is just add together these columns, just like in you know normal um, columnar multiplication, and we add these together and we get these large um, coefficients. Now, of course, these are going to be way too large, way larger than fifty-one bits because you know just this part is fifty-one bits, so this will end up larger. But that we can worry about later. Uh, so what we are doing here is here for each value at the for each column we have these operations that we need to do uh, a0 times b0 and then uh, a1 times b4 times 19 and we here in the go code we do it by pre-computing a bunch of times 19 values and then we have these this code okay so that was super quick, but now is the time to ask uh, questions about just the context, what, why we're doing this, what is the library, where is the code, how do you follow along, uh, go, ask. Well, I take a sip.
Oh, excellent. Uh, so Michael, the author of Avo, is in chat. That's fantastic. And there's uh, Matt, uh, Damien. Hi, everybody. Um, this, this is a good chat. Um, so is the package going to end up in um, X crypto? Um, no, so this is very intentionally not exposed in X crypto, uh, but what it is is um, going to end up as the internal package of the Add to Five Five Nineteen library. So I can actually make a pull up a separate profile here. One sec. There we go. Oop. So I already have a uh, Ed two five five nineteen CL that you can look at. Um, there's both a uh, CL to add a metric ton of tests with vectors that I auto-generated in a different repo, but that's a whole other story. Um, but that will lock in the exact behavior of the at 5519 uh, library. And then I'm going to replace the uh, guts of Edwards 25519, um, of 825519 with this package. This package, the, the, the thing in the standard library will then become the source of truth, but I will keep syncing it out to this filippo.io package, which of course doesn't have uh, the promise of support from the Go team forever, nor the same you know code review for the parts that don't end up in the standard library, nor the um, compatibility promise, nor you know the kind of endorsement that putting something in X crypto brings. Because for example, this package still tells you, you know, cofactors are kind of a thing, uh, we hope you know what they are and what they do because we just left those traps unattended. Don't step into them. So we're not putting that in X crypto. Uh, but if people want to use it, I know everybody has been um, uh, has been forking crypto at five five one one at five five one nine internal Edwards two five five one nine. I will say those numbers so many times today. Um, and that. Not a great idea. So this package is for you. This is actually way, 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 way safer and happens to be way faster. Um, an older patch set had uh, a bench stat in there, which makes uh, signatures twice as fast. So you can import it as the filpo.io package. Cool. So uh, back to us. Um, so yeah, the idea is that yeah, you can't use it from within uh, the crypto standard library, but you don't have to fork it and export it because it, there's already a you know official, as in Filippo official, but not as in Go Team official um, fork at um, Filippo.io. Um, Michael was asking about. Um, my math comments with uh, Unicode exponents. Yeah, I just really like writing them like that. Uh, I'm not sure they're actually that readable, but I, I kind of hate when you you know do the caret and everything is uh, on a single line and kind of hard to scan. You made a package for this. Uh, what does it do? Oh, neat! Oh, extremely neat. Oh, I love it. Nice. I'm not going to spend time setting it up now in the stream because uh, that would just be a bunch of VS Code uh, config twiddling but I am definitely switching to this. Uh, so in the uh, 
to answer the question of how I make them, uh, it's very much like this. <laughs> and you know those um, type your uh, five most used emojis? Well, mine are superscript 1, superscript 3, superscript 5, superscript 7, superscript 0. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, I just click, 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 click. <laughs> <laughs> You were expecting some sort of fancy tooling or remembering the Unicode sequences? Nah. <laughs> um, question from Nightly Master. Um, what did I use before VS Code? I was using Sublime Text. And is Go support better on VS Code? Um, VS Code is the only one that has support directly from the Go team, but Vingo is excellent. Um, I hear good things about the Emacs integration. Uh, the reason I use VS Code is that I um, I never learned uh, Vim superpowers, but I learned um, multi-cursor superpowers, and we'll actually see them in the stream because I will take some Go code and turn it into assembly just by a bunch of multi-cursor um, editing. All right, let's get into it. What are we doing? Uh, we are rewriting uh, this assembly code, which is already the good kind of assembly code. This is assembly code that isn't, you know, 2,000 lines, it's 200. Uh, it has comments, Look at these, it has comments. Um, and most importantly, matches one-to-one -one the Go code. That is, I think, something that we you just can't contribute uh, assembly implementation without a matching Go implementation that I can look side to side and test side uh, by side by fuzzing it. Uh, we have too many of those, and that's why we have the assembly policy there we go um which says pretty much that we kind of don't like assembly so really use as little as you have to but if you have to may auto generate it with avo foreshadowing um small units and needs a reference implementation uh and needs to document while it requires assembly basically open an issue saying yeah the compiler is not doing not doing the right thing um and then um so that at some point we can fix the compiler and drop the assembly uh where was i here so this this code is also going to be an example for how i want things to look like that uh, follow the assembly policy uh which has been long overdue now uh here, the code we're rewriting is this, right? Compute R0, R1, R3, R4 by adding together a bunch of multiplications. Uh, you might uh, wonder about the types here because in Go there isn't a uint128, right? So um, here we just have some very thin uh, types which just hold a uint122 in two halves, low and high, uh, and functions like mol64, which multiplies two uint64s and makes a uint128, which is very much just sugar around the bits.mul64 intrinsic. So this entire thing should probably compile down to a single instruction. Uh, and then things like add mul64, which um, does the multiplication and then adds it to the uint128 with a carry chain of intrinsics, which again should compile down to just a add and then add with carry. Uh, so if this the addition of the two low parts has a, a carry, you know, carry the one, uh, we carry the one here and carry it into the next addition and return the uint128. So that's just what they do and this is how short they are in go and it would be nice to be able to write something similar in assembly right well in assembly this looks a bit like this this is this is this so if we follow it we we, we, we can follow it but reviewing this is a pain especially when it starts losing um comments 
Now, you know, the, there's some mob, it, it loads this thing, which is the zero of BX. What is BX? BX, I guess, is A. So A gets loaded in BX. What is A? A is the pointer to the first field element. Okay, so this is the thing at the zeroth position in field element. Do we know what it is? Well, not for sure, really. So we have to go up here, go to the definition of field element, check the first thing there is the L0, so the lowest limb. Of course, it wouldn't be, have been smart to put L5 first, but these are all things that we don't know just by looking at the assembly. Uh, and then we do the multiplication, and the multiplication multiplies this value by a A A X for some reason. Uh, and then stores the result in dx and ax. dx is the high part and ax is the low part. And so we store this, this is basically r0.high and this is r0.low. And then we do the same thing next where we load the um, x1 because we're trying to do that multiplication, multiply by nine. You, you see that following all this is a pain and are, are, you have to use highlighting to make sure that the, the right um, register is being used and then you get here where it's actually used and, and you look at this and you're like, right, right, R12. What was R12 again? And you're scrolling all the way back up and R12 apparently was the low part of R3 maybe? It's a pain. Now, what you can do is write a bunch of macros, but macros don't check types, don't check anything really, so if you use them wrong, they're wrong. Enter AVO. So AVO is... why is this broken again? I, I'm annoyed by this. Uh, okay. Wow! When I hide the sidebar, it, it breaks. Uh, why do we always find a bug while we're in st on stream? Okay. Uh, I guess we're keeping the... Okay, no, this is this is just broken. You are in a, working on a nested module. Um, please open it as a separate workspace folder. That's what I did, though. That's exactly what I did. Um... Yeah, it is because of the nested module situation, and I kind of wanted to you know what for the stream we're just going to drop drop this um module we'll just go mod tidy it into the parent module and then i'll figure out why it's broken and turn it back into a um nested module in a sec uh, after the stream boom uh all gone. Okay, so here's how the same thing looks like in AVO. Th this is, generates the exact same assembly. Except that, you know, computing R3 looks basically the same as computing R3 over here. Check this out. Click. Click. It's the same number of lines to write in assembly and to write in, um, in Go. I knew it was good. I, I, I wrote the assembly policy. I, I, I knew it, to, it, it. I know I'm late to, to the party, but look at that! What I did is I again made a uint128 uh, type and has a name, and we'll see why, and a high and a low, just like the other one has uint64s. Um, uh, this one has GP virtual, so a general purpose virtual um, register. And how we use it is that we, uh, AVO is the code generator, right? So it runs, you run this file and it generates the, um, uh, it generates the code. We'll just pull these out so that we don't step over our code. Okay, now it's kidding. Now it's messing with me. I installed you. I can uninstall you. Uh, okay, so back to us. Uh, the idea is that you run this file and it generates an assembly file, right? So let's 
Actually, let's see it in in action. So there's boom, kaboom. By provided, but not uh, stub stubs. Stubs. Yay! Um, click it. Uh, clickety, clickety. Hide. Okay, so this is the thing that um, Avo generated. Uh, and you, we generated this by running this command with go generate, and that just run the main function. So part one is it's just go. So we know how to write go, we know how to write go functions, types, uh, helpers, uh, loops. So we can do all of that in the code generator that then generates the assembly. Then we tell um, Avo, you know, things like make a, a few mu uh, mule function uh, and uh, with this function signature where we specify the type to a doc string that for some reason doesn't generate. So I'm kind of confused by that one. Um, and then we start putting in the, uh, the meat of the, um, of the code. I made a name component, which is very much just a component with a name. The reason all of these uh, things are um, imported without a prefix is that we're using dot imports, which static check is kind of upset about, but in a code generator is, is actually too nice uh, to pass on. So first with the reference param A, and here is the first part that's already the goddamn magic. A, we are not saying, you know, it's the first parameter. We're not saying what offset it has. We're just saying A. And uh, Avo is just looking at the function signature here, parsing that as a Go uh, a function type, figuring out that A is the second argument, figuring out what size that has on the stack because it knows what type this is. And so it's going and grabbing the value from the stack and generating this instruction. A mov q from frame pointer plus eight to cx. Cx, wait, we didn't say cx, right? No, we didn't. It just allocated um, uh, uh, a register for us. Then, I just make a bunch of name components for the fields. Again, fields, field, assembly doesn't know about fields. Avo just goes in, no, we tell, if we tell the Avo the package, it goes into this package, finds this type, which happens to sit over here, notices where the field is, figures out the uh, layout of this type, and knows at what offset this is. Which means that if I add, I don't know, a, a whole ass, I don't know, foo string here, and save, the generated assembly, which before was loading things from uh, CX, here is A, right? So it was loading things from position zero, if I now run go generate, it explodes. Okay, unknown variable b, um, unknown variable b, unknown variable b. What did I break? I broke something. Oh, I broke absolutely everything because I this breaks all, all, all everything. Yeah, let's. Let's not do that. But just imagine that if we did that and didn't break all of the rest of the package, it would have figured out automatically that this is actually now string, so pointer and length uh, uh, a I really should know 16 bytes uh, further. And so it would have uh, put 16 here automatically and just figured all that out because it, this is basically type checked assembly. And why have we been writing assembly any other way? So it figures out where the field is automatically. All right. So we made our, our named components. We made our uint 128. And then when it's time to actually do the meat of the code, we just make a uint 128 with two allocated general purpose uh, registers and a name because we'll see in a, in a bit why the name. And then I made the exact same functions that we had here. So 
a few, uh, mule 64 and add mule 64 and we can we just wrote the same functions that instead of taking a uint 128 uh, made of actual numbers it takes one made of virtual registers and let's look at mule 64 uh, first first it prints a comment and that's why we gave names to things uh, r a x and b x uh, the arguments here have are um, stringers so we can just print something that's like a comment that says you know this sets r equal ax times bx boom then does a load from ax into rax then it does a mole q for the address of bx which it resolves and takes the address of if there is a better way to do this without a must adder michael uh, do tell me um and then moves the dx and ax, which are the outputs, into r.high and r.low. This is this is so much more reviewable because take this function, you look at it, and of course it's right, right? The comment is right, the load takes this argument and loads into rax. The mole q, you have to, you know, look up what mole q does, but um, it's still assembly. Uh, so you look up what mulq does and it does rax times the thing you're passing it and then it stores the result in rdx and rax and then we take the things from rdx and rax and we put them here in high and low um, cool 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 um, oh hey Cynthia um, Yep, no syntax highlighting except for the, uh, you know, hi little highlights. Um, <laughs> there is a um, uh, pull request <laughs> that adds must adder, which is exactly the little thing I, uh, I made. Neat. Well, <laughs> um, looks like it's right. Um, okay, so final little thing is that we can do conditionals so remember that the code in generic uh, had to do multiplication by 19 sometimes but sometimes not and how that looked like in the assembly is that sometimes there was a line saying multiply this thing by 19 and sometimes there wasn't and now you're just going with your eyes through them and trying to figure out okay so this one is bringing in which one again? Which one is 16, the offset? Uh, was that one supposed to be multiplied by 19 or not? And instead, in the AVO code, we just added another argument to the addmol64 function, which has a very well-defined signature. But here's the cool thing. When the multiplier is 1, we just don't generate the multiply. So we get all of the um, efficiency because the condition is in the code generator. And again, we can review the function and make sure that it's right. And either it loads the thing and then multiplies it by i and stores it in uh, rax, or it loads it straight to rax and then does the mole, and then does the... Ooh, this was a bug. Lol. <clears throat> it's no assembly. If you put the wrong instruction in, it will still be the wrong instruction. Um, but way easier to, to fix here, because I just fixed it in one place. Now my function is right, and everything else works. Uh, now, final thing that... Uh, that I really enjoyed. So the parts that blew my mind are the fact that it just figures out types and does type checking for your as uh, assembly. The fact that we can just make functions so naturally that take complex higher level types. Um, we did not name a, a register anywhere except, you know, things that are required by the architecture because MoleQ wants things in RAX and RDX. Um, because it does... Um, uh, register allocation for us. And finally, at some point, I was writing this function and I wrote it wrong. And I was writing a load instead of RAX, I was loading it into EAX. If I were writing assembler, this, it would have just let me do that and just have, it would have just chomped my, uh, um, uh, my 32 more bits. But here, since AX 
is this component, which comes from one of these components, which comes from one of these components, which is this component, which is this field of this type that we know is 64 bits. When I try to load this 64 bits into a 32 bit thing, kaboom, could not deduce mob instruction. Now, the error message took me a second, had to look it up in the source, but it was stopping me from uh, d doing something that made no sense. Click, clock the clock, boom. Okay, so this was the excitedly talking about the thing I've been doing this afternoon part. Now we get to finish this because I rewrote the whole first part. And you know what? We should also write um, the square function so that we can start from scratch and uh, do, from, do something from the beginning. Uh, squaring is exactly like multiplication, except the, um, the terms are the same. And since the terms are the same, we, we get to multiply some things by two instead of computing them twice. For example, here, for computing R0, we are adding together L4 times L1 times 19, and L1 times L4 times uh, 19. These two terms are the same. So instead of uh, um, doing this multiplication twice, we do it once and then multiply by two. Even better, we pre-compute L1 times 38, so L1 times 19 times two, and then we multiply that by L4 and we get that value. So to, to recap, the result is that we do these multiplications, which is just a single mol 64 and then one add mol 64 with 38 here. Okay, so let's do that in AVO. Um, I don't know how one is supposed to split functions, but I am going to split this into uh, func uh, fe mule and move the, leave the red there and move the generate here and put fe mule here and let's see if that works. Okay, it does. Um, and then we make fe square which is basically the same function. So we start by copy pasting this function. We comment out fmule so that it doesn't generate it. We rename fmule in f square. Uh, we tell it that it does the multiplication like that, we match the value here, yep. We have the same L fields here. We don't have B, so this goes away. And let's just delete all this stuff, which was the actual meat of the implementation. Okay, so this is um, F square, and this is how we are getting started. Um, let's just add some code to absorb unused stuff. And let's try running it. Yeah, there's a fe square function. It loads a. Uh, it has input and output. Looks good. Now, here's the the part that I just I can't get over how nice this is. We just take this code. Paste it here. Steal 
the remove some of the intermediate steps that if one wants to understand that they can look at uh, the generic code add and consider that we copied this code from from go we are copying go straight into assembly and it will generate assembly uh, then we cut out the assignments because those just operate on the thing directly and then we take these mm, and we make them things that we actually pass directly in and we make sure to pass our zero to mol64 go generate boom this is the assembly and it will probably look exactly like the fe square assembly isn't that extremely cool but gets even better because to do all the rest we just copy paste this whole section and we're just throwing away what we already did whatever so we first manually delete these now we can throw away this line then forever we copy this line so that we are ready to make them and then a bunch of multi-cursor magic And by the way, this is why I use um, VS Code Go. VS Code in general, I guess. We add ones for the ones that didn't have any multiplication. And we do have a problem because we didn't write the mol64 function to support um, a multiplication. Oh, Michael is pointing out that the doc um, is um, goes to the stubs file, not to the um, uh, assembly file. That makes sense. Uh, I hadn't added the stubs at all uh, until until now. Um, so that's, that's what I had wrong. Uh, okay, so what we need to do is just rewrite the mul64 function so that like the add mul64 function supports i int over here and returns i times blah so we already have surely some code here that does that for example this and what it's doing is it's dropping in um shift uh, left q on the ax because multiplying by two is nothing else than shift left um interestingly this assembly is doing something different for the multiplication by 19 no, it's not. Here's the imol q uh, three q. The other thing I'm excited about is that I think we can cache a lot of the multiplications by nineteen. 
but it's not something I would ever want to do in the manually written assembly because I would have to keep track of which registers are in use and how many registers I have left. And I am really hoping that uh, Avo will have some way to just keep an allocator for me or maybe like uh, something where it tells me how many registers I have uh, left and I get to use the, those as a cache or something like that. Um, Michael, if you got what I mean and you want to think uh, about that, that would be awesome to get a tip about that. Um, so we fixed that femul to be right. Now all of our invocations are right. Cool. Not possible right now, but uh, uh, something that maybe is not impossible to build, which would be great. Um, also, maybe something like something that automatically um, pops into the stack or pops out. I guess at some point should shouldn't make you write a compiler. So I don't know if that's beyond the line. No, that's the compiler. That's a compiler job or or not. But something that would be nice is I have a bunch of these intermediate values. I can very cheaply recompute them, but I don't want to think about how many to keep around, which anyway, I expect will be way less painful with Avo because I will just keep caching more of them until Avo tells me, yeah, you run out of uh, registers there because Avo assigns registers for me. Uh, so maybe uh, actually doesn't change that much i can do that part manually but i would definitely not do that in the um, uh, manually written uh, assembly because there i would risk just not noticing that actually this um, register was still alive as this value over here and you just stomped over it or something like that cool okay so what do we do here for i? Well, we just said that the nicest way to implement um, uh, to implement uh, multiplication by by two would be a shift left by one. Now we can do logic based on the values to generate the nicest um, uh, instructions. So we can just write switch i and have case 1. And in, if it's 1, we just, uh, we just don't do anything. Uh, because 1 is, you know, this case. While if it's two, we can do a shift left by one of AX. And the comment should also change. So we just hoist out our string comment. We have comment equal this. If it's one, it's this. If it's two we do two times that and if it's anything else panic unsupported i value and can we just be that sloppy yes because this is a code generator uh wait Eh, whatever. Le better a bit of repetition than... Um, than too much complexity. So actually we don't hoist out the comment. And if it's a 2, we add a shift left Q um, of RAX by immediate... one boom 
Um, and at this point, I kind of want to make this one a, uh, a switch to. And it, this will automatically check that my immediate is the value that can actually be represented as an immediate. Um, cool, 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 cool. We could even enforce more um, safety things. For example, if we wanted, if we knew that this function only works when i is at most 2 to the 8 or something like that, we could check that because it's not a runtime check, but a compile time check. We can basically write a bunch of compile time uh, uh, checks all over the place. Okay, I think this should work. Catching up with chat for a second. Yeah, uh, I think I actually uh, agree. Uh, this The whole register spilling and caching is probably not something that should be in AVO, because AVO should not go full compiler. But AVO libraries, yes, that sounds like a great idea. Um, something that I can import, and it provides me with um, intermediate value ca uh, caching for, for AVO. Yep. Yes. Um, and I was pointed to this Blake 3 implementation by Zebo, where they do exactly this. So, a lock, master lock, hi. <laughs> uh, oh, master lock, no, actually, is not. I see you are lock in the cache. Uh, Yeah, this is probably more full feature than what I need for the five things that I need to store here, but nice. Uh, I am really looking forward to things just um, building on top of Avo and being just things that you can import. Um, which is why, though, I think we should build a, um, a practice of using real Go modules dependency management for Avo uh, files, which is what I'm doing here with the nested module, which we'll have to report a bug about the nested module itself. But the uh, nested module can import uh, with a replace philippo.io slash edwards519 so that it has access to the types. And, uh, oh boy, is that actually going to work? Yes, it should. But anyway, the point is that I, although I don't want the Go mod of my parent package to have Avo in it, I want a Go mod with all of the exact things locked in and you know other third-party uh, Avo libraries that I'm using at the same time, so that we know that things are compatible and it stays reproducible. Because the final uh, bit that I'm really looking uh, forward to is where I can review the Avo code of a CL to the standard library, run the Avo. Uh, generation, verify that it generates the assembly that's getting checked in, and not even read the assembly. So much looking forward to that. So 
Sweet. Now, um, this was the part that I already knew how to do. Uh, now we're moving on to the part that I kind of don't. Um, or at least I haven't looked at yet. Um, I might get some water. Um, so what we did so far is that we replaced this assembly. And now we have to do the two reduction chains. There's two of them. In generic code, it's this is the first reduction chain. And this is the second reduction chain. They are the exact same code. Uh, the only difference is that this one is right, shifting right uh, uint128. Uh, R0 here is a UN128 and shift right by 51 is just another helper function that we built on our fake UN128 uh, value where we shift right the lower bits by 51 and uh, we shift at the top the lower 64 minus 51 so the ones that end up getting pulled in of the high part. There is a single instruction for that on um, in assembly. So in assembly, we get to write this whole thing as a single instruction. It would also be nice if um, the compiler figured this out, and maybe it does. Uh, I haven't checked, um, but yeah. Now. Um, this is the part that explains the whole bounds and everything of why this um, uh, reduction works. And then we do the exact same thing in um, in squaring. Again, the, the reason I like the pattern of writing the exact same algorithm in Go and in assembly is that in Go, you can make sure to write it very, very readably um and full of comments and then the reviewer goes like understands the algorithm from the go ma checks that the algorithm here matches the algorithm in avo checks that the avo generation is valid and now anybody who doesn't have that much assembly experience uh, or training can review this code as well Now, as we said, the code for the two um, uh, carry propagations uh, is the same. We take the carries, which are, since each limb is supposed to hold only 51 bits, is everything that goes above 51 for each of them. And then we take only the lower 51 bits and add the carry from the lower thing. So the new R1 is the R lowest 51 bits of R1 plus the carry from R0 and so on and so forth until we get the carry of the highest part which we multiply by 19 because again reduction identity everything that shifts out we since it, the number is so the, the module is so close to 255 uh, 2255 we can just multiply by 19 and add back at the beginning so we do this twice why because the first time we do it, um, R0 can be up to 111 bits. So if we shift it right by 51, we end up with 60 bits. So C0 might be 60 bits. So when we do this plus this, it's 51 bits plus 60 bits. So it might end up being 61 bits. And instead, we want the reduction to bring everything below 52. So first we do this, which will bring everything from down from... Um, shit. Okay, what was that? Mm -hmm. I, yeah, I honestly don't know what that was because OBS didn't crash. 
Um, yeah, all right. Uh, let's not ask ourselves too hard. Saved by the um, Twitch disconnection. Um, uh, little. Yes, sorry, I got distracted. Uh, so the first time we do the, the shifting, we end up, uh, we do the reduction. We go from these values, which were 111 bits, to values that are now 61 bits. But that's still not enough. So we put them into a field element and we call carry propagate, which is capable of going from 64, and 61, of course, is smaller, so it fits, uh, down to 52. Why 52? Because it takes the 51 low once and then it adds the carry which at that point is at most 64 minus 51 uh, 13 bits or mm, 18 for the one that we multiply by 19 and 51 a 51 bit number plus a 13 bit number can't be larger than 52 bits um, so this guarantees that it fits below 52 bits and all of the other code written in the library is written to make sure to work as long as uh, the values are at most 52 bits. Um, at most 52 bits. Okay, so this is what we need to convert to AVO next. I'm going to leave this on, on the screen for a second and indeed go fill up the bottle and uh, I'll be right back. Also a good time to drop questions in chat. And back. Putting the headset on immediately after a shower has consequences for hair. Water, electrolytes, and a juice box. Because uh, I like the um, L, L Armageddon's um, way of saying uh, you need a, a nap and a juice box. Which, yep. Hmm. Okay, now let's see how the old assembly does this. Uh, we would expect to find uh, instruction to do the shift right, an instruction to do the mask, and an instruction to do the addition for the first round. So this one first loads the mask, which is mask low 51 bits into AX. So this is the max, the mask. Indeed, this is the shift left. Shift left. So thirteen is um, sixty-four minus fifty-one. So this part is a shift left, yes. Oh, it's a shift left with um, carry. So a different way to see a shift right of 51 of um, UIN 128 is to take the high part, um, 
shifted left. Wait. Yes, you take the high part, you shift it left by 13, and in those 13, you bring in the highest bits of the low part. And in practice, you end up with a unit 64, which is the shift right by 51 of the, um, uh, of the unit 128. Okay, that checks out. Juice box. Yeah, sorry for folks uh, joining us now. I did a whole uh, uh, catching up. So maybe, um, I don't know if VODs are available already during the stream, but if you catch the first 15 minutes of the stream, it explains uh, what we're up to and why we're doing this. Hmm. Much better. Okay, so this shifts left by uh, 13 and shift left shifts left CX, which is R0. Okay, that, that checks out. And the, R, the low part of R0. Okay. And R8, which is the high part of R0. So we put... Um, no, sorry. Are they mi mixed up? Oh no, yes. The X is the high part and the one is the high part. See, it's so much easier when you can write dot high. Um, so we can write the same um, function to do shift left by um, by 15. The only annoying thing is that it ends up clobbering the high value. So after this happens, we have to throw away the uint128. Uh, okay. Um, boom, 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 boom. And then... Let's finish looking through what it does. Then it does an end, which again checks out. Uh, again checks out because that's the uh, masking. Uh, then it computes another shift, another mask, and then it does the addition. And it adds it into... Mm. It adds it each into the next register, which is probably a nice optimization, but also not sure how we write that in AVO. We'll think that in a about that in a second. And then finally, it does the multiplication by 19 and uh, add. So it's doing the add at the same time as the... Okay, so this is interspersed. Uh, instead of doing it like this, where first we do all the shifts, then we do all the additions, it's doing shift, mask, add, shift, uh, no, no, here, shift, mask, add, shift, mask, add, shift, mask, add. I think that since we have the registers, we can rewrite it to do to look exactly like this. Let's try it. Um, first, we need a function that does the shift right by 51, and we need it to have some meaningful types. What it needs to generate is a um, shift left Q. And what it will do is that its result ends up in the last argument like everything in the go assembler um, which is the high part which is the part that gets shifted left and the low part gets okay so let's write the helper function for that Uh, 
uh, argument 128. And I think that what it returns is one of the uh, one of the um, registers. Yep. Actually, to make sure that we don't fuck this up, we'll take a pointer to the unit one twenty eight so that we can destroy it. Um, Oh, even better. Uh, we can make it return out and low, because those are the two things that survive. The high part gets clobbered by this operation. Um, this is the high part, and it gets destroyed, replaced with our result, while the low part survives. So, yes, returns R shifted right by 15 and um, R dot low. After this function is called, the UN128 may not be used anymore. So we emit a shift left Q. Is that right? Yeah. In this version here. So immediate Y13 because it's 64 minus 51. So immediate 64 minus 51 we get to write that so we don't have to wonder what is 13 then the low part which is the part that survives and the high part and then we return the high part which is now actually the output and the low part which is still valid um how do we clobber the un128 um uh th this is an interface right right so an interface is a pointer type, so we can just make a copy
Okay. So this should do the shift left by 51. And we can try it. So here C0, so the carry of the first one is actually we can copy paste this entire blob. Shift right, shift right. It's implemented as a shift left on the high part, but it's a shift right. Right. Uh, which is unhappy because it wants pointer to these, these so that it can destroy them. Still not working. Um, right, because it returns two things. The other one is the one that we're going to need here. So for each of them, we save them like that. Okay, I think this should work. And yeah, using AVO with uh, IDEs, uh, we get assembly autocomplete, which is another reason I don't want to use uh, build ignore because that um, stops all of that from working. Okay, now let's just save all of these into and try to execute it. Yeah, look at that. What is it doing? Oh, uh, right. We didn't put a comment down. Um, is there a way to tell Avo in not to make the immediate hex, but make them de decimal instead? Oh well, um, you know, feature request. And yeah, look at these... Um, uh registers they just got all automatically assigned so r0 high and uh high and low and used here and the other cool thing is that look look again at the registers right so here it's using bx bp for zero s i d i for one r8 r9 for for r2 Look what happens if I turn this off and we run go generate. We're not using them anymore. So since we don't use BX again after this, it will just keep reusing BX for R0, R1, R2, R3. This is the AVO uh, register scheduler uh, at work. It was just clobbering R, R2, um, R, R0 with R1, um, R1 with R2, R2 with R3, etc., etc., until we started using them. As soon as we started using them, keep your eyes on these, boom, all of these uh, uh, registers changed. I am very happy about it. Okay, 
So we have the shifts. Now we need the the masks on the low values. So first we load um, the immediate value for the mask, which again is exactly like the Go code. We make a constant out of this. What was it called? Mask low 51 bits. General purpose 64 bit register, please. Yes. Uh, no, it's not a load, it's a mov Q. No, it's not a mov Q. Help from chat. <laughs> Uh, what am I doing wrong? Um, a constant can't be used as a component. Okay. Um, Hmm. I can look at the examples. If anybody from chat wants to beat me to it though, how do I load? Um... Ooh, X sounds like something I will have to look into for the split package. Uh, SHA-1 definitely has constants. Oh, um, I'm just trying to figure out um, how I load truly the, the simplest thing. Uh, I'm just not super familiar with the type system yet. I'm just trying to write this mov. And when I tried to use mov queue, it was um, very unhappy, probably because I can't just use this and expect it to be re uh, returned. But if I use load, it's also unhappy. And I assume there's a good function for this. Um, I just don't know what it is. Um, U64. That still doesn't work. Oh, switch back to mobq, okay. Uh, which is unhappy because it's not a value. So I guess I have to first... Um, Assign it and then use it. Okay, that checks out. I mean, maybe im will also work. Yeah, im will also work. Um, uh, the, the thing is that, that I was doing wrong was that I was expecting the um, load function to work, but I think I see why not. It's not a component. Nice, checks out. Okay, so first we take the mask. And then we do a bunch of ands, which are not even that interesting. And then do additions into values that at that point we just change name of. Ooh. checks out the uh, in will figure out the right size from the um from that uh that makes sense to me um 
something that I feel like would be nice to have is a way to invalidate um, a reference to um, to a register. Because, like, for example, here I would like to rename C0 to... Uh, to M1, but yeah, this is probably not something that's AVO level, really. Um, because now for each of these, we want to do this. Uh, Uh, and I guess I can just use the low, um, the low registers. Yeah, why not? Uh, that's not what this is doing, but there isn't actually any reason not to. Um, yeah. Yeah, um, Damien points out that I can just um, assign M0 to C0 and make the source code easier to read, but what I'm worried about is that I will use C0 later and not realize that it's now aliased to M0. The weird thing is that basically now integers are pointer types. Uh, that's the only sort of um, thing that I worry about tripping me up. Um, thinking if we can make a mm, tiny nice function for this. You should return a end of our mask. End of the operand and return the operand so that we get to use it in something else. Okay, and then uh, the addition. Oh, nice. I can make a different register and then do a move. And if I've assigned the same register to them, it will actually remove the move instruction later because it will notice it's doing... Uh, uh, an unnecess an unnecessary move. I might like that. Uh, 
I don't actually end up needing it here because I'm just going to use R0 um, and swap around which one I add into which one. But I kind of do like it. Because then if I, by mistake, end up reusing the previous one, Avo will probably... Avo will not assign the same register to them. Uh, yeah. Um, also, um, Letterip suggests doing a one-line swap uh, where you do M0, C0, um, C0, nil, so it's clear that you did the swap. Uh, it takes a second to parse, but it's probably safer. Yeah, it's probably a trade-off depending on how far you end up using uh, different things. Yep. Anyway, back to writing our thing. Uh, we have the shifts, we have the masks. Um, mismatched operation. Well, yes, <laughs> thank you. We can do the addition just like that. Um, so for the addition, um, we will probably end up uh, splitting them up. Eh, okay, I'm going way too hard for the whole use. Um, make it look exactly like go um let's let's not do that um instead let's do the actual ending Okay, so we do the end, and then we do the addition. Let's leave this one to the side for a second. And the other additions, are they done in some fancy way? They are very much not. Um, here we would have to think about which one is R8. R8 came out of here, but here we don't. We just do just a bunch of add cues. Um, Well, here we need to do one of those multiplications that we stashed away here. For which we probably need to uh, um, allocate a register because it's 19 BX into DX and DX is a new register, so yeah. So we make C4 19. We and we do the I mule of 19 times C4. I'll do it. Wait, I'm not sure why this doesn't do it. And Ava would just do that with for us um, if we let it do the um, uh, the register allocation. I'm sure, but we don't need C4 by itself. We only need C4 multiplied by um, by 19. So we can just multiply C4, and that's going to be more readable. Uh, also, because then we can just do the add. Like this. Okay, um, not as readable as this, but very darn close. 
we take the carry and we add it to r1 low which is the result of ma uh, which we've masked uh yeah honestly that looks very readable to me will it blend it did blend is it the same number of instructions even if in a dif slightly different order i think it is This says, it doesn't say. This is 16 instructions. This is 16 instructions. Yes. Nice. Oh, I'm happy. And then we finally do the final carry propagate, which is, sorry, this was the stuff which is the exact same thing with just an actual shift right by 15 instead of a, a weird uint 64 one. For some reason, that ends up being more lines in the original assembly. I'm not sure why. Uh, why is that? Um, RDX got set. Oh, because there are, there are a few mobs, which makes sense when you are... Um, when you're, you're not keeping track of your registers and you don't want to just lose sanity around that, but we will not have that problem. So we can just do a shift right, Q, and then the exact same add Q, mov Q, and imol. So we just copy-paste this second reduction chain i assume we can reuse the same mask yep so we don't need to define this anymore and here instead of shift right by 51 we do a shift right q by immediate 51 and then the rest can be exactly the same we can probably even move it out into a function but let's not get too fancy i guess and boom which ends up being shorter Fifteen lines. Uh, although it's probably yeah, it's uh, no, it's not. Okay. Um, Michael is asking. So this would end up being quite different from the Go code, but have you considered a slice of registers? So instead of C zero to one C two, probably a slice uh, right C. Uh, and then I can use loop loops. Um, yes, um, I'm almost sure that in Go, that would make it um, a little slower uh, because the loop would actually happen, you know, at runtime. While here we have the great advantage that loops are free because they're compile time loops. Uh, I guess the question is whether we want to um prioritize one-to-one -one correspondence to the um, to the go code or we want to uh prioritize um readable avo uh it's it's a good question um i'm not sure uh but also we are not done we just need to set the final out um, so we have to do a bunch of stores, which I remember seeing an example for and thinking that I was so far from reaching. Um, okay, store works exactly like I uh, imagine, I guess. 
So we just uh, Is there a way to generate an empty line without a comment? Uh, I mean, the examples totally, uh, totally worked, so <laughs> uh, they, they did their job. Uh, Yeah, here too, I, I could do a loop over uh, 0 to 4. Um, yeah, it's a good question which one would end up being nicer. Because there would be the exception for the 19th at the beginning. Um, I am not sure. Hmm. Sotr. Oh, and out. Why does this already have out? Because it did that the reference at the beginning, which is a waste of. Uh... All right, I think this works. The things were shifting right. No, wait, this doesn't work. Um, the mobs were necessary, right, okay, uh, right, here we get to do it in a single line because the low part gets um, preserved, while here we need to first duplicate all of the low parts, or better yet, make new, um, better yet, use C zeros, right, yeah, so... That's why this had the mobs, uh, not for uh, register allocation, but because this way we are stomping over the thing we then need to add to later. So instead of doing this, we first we first copy things to. C. Okay, that makes more sense. And now it's going to be 20 lines, exactly like the original. Yep. I should not doubt George. <laughs> I think this is the exact same assembly except with different registers, maybe. And I'm very happy about that result. Oh, and we grouped the shift lefts to match the go a little better. Let's add some comments, because all of this stuff is obvious for now, but it will not be soon enough. So 
So that matches the Okay, um, and then after these shift rights here, we have that um, our blah is plus equaled. No, our blah is our blah and mask low 51 bits plus sieve. And that's exactly what the Go code is doing with the times 19 here. And I think that this is close enough that you can see which part is which part. Oh, that's a good question from um, uh, Sumon in chat. Uh, if the register basically is the register allocator deterministic, I would expect it to be. Um, I would be kind of surprised if it wasn't. And finally, we can put the same the same docs here. Actually, these would don't need comments because they're literally the same function. Well, these ones are worth a comment, which are the exact same as this. So let's take these comments. And put them before each of this. Okay, we can probably make the AVO significantly nicer uh, by moving this into functions, but I do like um, keeping the same um, hell. We could make this these chunks into functions. Yeah, right, let's make a function for that. Um, I guess we call it mask and add. Oh yeah, uh, I would definitely uh, uh, read that port to AVO of the Poly 1305, 1305 code. Um, the comments are not generated into the assembly if there are actual Go comments, but if there are comment invocations, they become assembly comments. It, it's not converting the Go, it's these are actual functions that are actually running. 
So for example, these functions don't actually show up in the assembly, which is nice because we can do all sorts of compile time, basically things. Okay, let's make a, uh, how do we call it? Um, mask and add. So what it does is given a target, which we'll call R, a mask, a carry, and a multiplier. R uh, mask carry and multiplier, where the multiplier is a UN64, the carry and the R are um, GP virtuals, and the mask is also GP virtual. Mask and add sets R equal R and mask plus C times I. Let's take the one that does the multiplication. Mask R. R, C, 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 and here we put a switch uh, with K is 1, and that way, no, this can just be a if, if I different from nil, different from one, it runs that. So we can replace all of these with mask and ads. Uh, and again, as a little bit of a stunt, uh, or to make a point, I want to take this code throw away all the one code we already have and just do this rewrite all of this as mask and add way more readable. And then we just run the exact same code because it's it, quite literally the, the same chain here. Cool. Is there a reasonable way to make this two... Uh, lines be a single line like it would, be, it would kind of be nice to have functions like mob q that return the result uh, um, just like here it would uh, i would have done uh basically this with the gp here it would be nice if functions that have one output returned their output register so that we can do chaining because that would allow me to do this.
yeah, uh, I do agree that uh, loops over um, slices of registers would make this code much more readable in the AVO, but I really wanted to match one to one to lines in the Go, because the idea is that one first learns the Go and then checks the um, checks the output. So yeah, I could make a uh, um, little wrappers and to be fair i kind of did for one of them wasn't there one? Oh, i think i deleted it then yeah i think i deleted it but i had a little helper that did that um but yeah just as an idea of maybe a uh if there's a way that ends up in the in avo that would be cool Okay, so this is the stressful part of and the exciting part. We go generate. We take this resulting code. And we copy paste it for now because it's generating separate files into here. And we see if the test still runs. Yeah, mostly there are changes to all, well, all of the registers, but it looks like the structure is the same. Except for the order here, which I think now I haven't screwed up. I had before. Drum roll, please. Boop. Shit! Oh yeah! Woohoo! Uh, the benchmark should be exactly the same unless there's something really weird going on. Uh, did I change anything else? No, this is the refactor from 18 hours ago. Is the diff anything else? No, so we can do... Uh, you're about to learn some horrible things about my architecture. Um, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm a fucking idiot. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this is the ARM64 machine. <laughs> uh, uh, I'm a damn bass. Uh, also, yes, actually, yeah, thanks for pointing that out. The camera is blocking the um, lowest part. <laughs> yeah, the ARM tests still pass. It would have been concerning if they didn't. <laughs> um... <laughs> Yeah, uh, that was a little um, too soon celebration. <laughs> Whoops. Um, so it's complaining that we've got no split in there. Well, we d it wasn't no split before, so it now wants this. Oh, is there a way to generate um, build tags? I imagine there is. Um, um, so instead of benchmarking, how about we actually run the damn tests? <laughs> uh, this should do it. And if you actually spend the time to look uh, at what it is doing, it's terrifying and I'm extremely proud of it. <laughs> 
Yeah, okay, fair enough. Uh, how the hell do we debug this? <laughs> Constraint, okay. So let's remember to do that before I forget. How do we debug this? Oh boy. Um, this is one of the most fun, question mark, parts of uh, working on cryptography engineering. Either it works, like first try, you feel like a, a, a divinity, it's just, you're amazing, everything is awesome, or, or now what? <sighs> Oh, nice, there's a whole language for them. Does that mean it also generates a go colon build? Uh, because that that would be nice. Um, Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, I am going to use um, constraint expert, but um, they're not going to let me put it in the standard library if it doesn't have also the newfangled uh, go colon build uh, more debuggable uh, version. But maybe I am talking too soon and I'll just run this and we'll just have it. Ah, cool, yes. Uh, we'll add this to the pile of things that Filippo should pile as actual issues, feature requests, instead of just dumping them on stream. Uh, but cool, this does the part that... Um, the stuff that we already have. Um, we can always carry a manual patch until... <sighs> Damn it. Also, I guess we might as well. Uh, copy paste the carry chain in the multiplication too. And see if by any chance maybe multiplication works while squaring doesn't. Which is unlikely, but you know. One can hope. Bunch of copy pasta, but so is uh, FE mule, F, uh, FE square, so. Checks out. Uh, that means saying that for the bagging of a code, um, uh, they turn uh, small generation functions into callable Go versions and compare them against their pure Go con counterparts, which, yeah, uh, yeah, I, uh, it just sounds painful. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna try the head. 
Hail Mary and we'll see what happens. Oh, no, we're not doing that anyway. Oh, come on, again? I don't know what that is. That's neither um, OBS. Uh, the OBS just went like, yeah, I, I'm not uploading anymore. The 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 bit rate dropped, and I've got no idea what what what. I clearly still have connectivity because I was able to say what the fucking chat. So, boo. Weird. Uh, ooh, that's a good idea. Uh, making a side-by-side -side, um, test of the Go and the assembly and then commenting out uh, piece by piece. Um, that, that, that makes sense. Let's, let's start by doing that. Also because we want side-by-side -side tests anyway. Uh, so. Oh, again. We could really have made the only thing you ever include in an assembler file automatically included. Yeah, those are not a little broken. Okay, do we already have tests for mole in particular? Uh, we have test mole distributes over add. Um, that is a thing. Uh, we have the whole weird limbs fuzzer, which I'm very proud of. Um, very quickly is a fuzzer that um, w skews heavily towards things that tend to break the code, like uh, two to two, uh, like all ones or one or zero, nineteen. Because here we do a bunch of times nineteens, uh, and it finds edge cases that other um, other things would have taken just. Uh, Oh, the random fuzzers would just never find. Um, okay, uh, we need a function that's pretty much exactly like this one, but for... Um, uh, F mu. F square. Let's start with F square. Um, assembly like, uh, like generic. We make two copies of T. Uh, we call T1 dot How is that implemented again? Oh, takes receiver. Um, which I think are allowed to overlap to, which did we get that right? Do we do all the loads first? Uh, yeah, we, we do all the uh, stores at the end. So yes, this is definitely going to work. Um, T1, T1, T2, T2. Uh, 
Okay, so we start from scratch. Okay, uh, don't get too excited, it's only passing because we've dropped the um, the changes. <laughs> now, we can try checking our theory that that test will work if we... Eh, what, what can we delete though? Because reduction... Like, what can we remove from the Go code? I guess we can remove the carry propagate call at the end uh, as a start. Uh, actually, we can remove all the all this and return the low limbs all the low limbs so r dot low and in the assembly it's going to be a little more painful finding all of the r zero zero but they are the ones getting and so we just take the things getting and and these are the lows. And we put these into the stores. Oh, which are the same. Fantastic. So we remove the two reduction chains. And in theory, if we run this test now, it will work. We drop the is in bounds because that also checks that the things are valid and they're definitely not going to be valid. Uh, and we're testing the old assembly for now. So yeah, pass just means that this is something that we can do to test our code. So we go in here, we take the avo, Actually, even better, we add the AVO to the index so that, and then we drop these two chains. And we store the low parts. Today I'm making silly mistakes, am I not? <laughs> Thank you, yes. <laughs> I was going to chase that one for a long time. Um, so that idea didn't actually work. Uh, Grumble. Isn't SI the low part of R0? Yes, RAX of R0. So, isn't this supposed to work? It kinda is. Ah, today we make silly mistakes. Today we make silly mistakes. Today we make silly mistakes. What do we make today? Today we make silly mistakes. Today we make silly mistakes. 
brand name silly mistake yep it does refer me that somebody coded in chat too okay so this plan is sound now we can know this plan is sound we run go generate We don't even have to check that the um, registers match up. And notice how it's now throwing away the high part every time, because it knows that now only the low part is useful. So we drop in this code, and if this code is broken, then the multiplication is broken. And guess what? We remembered this time. If this passes, we can look at the carry chain. If this fails and it fails, we need to look at the multiplication. Okay. Uh, are all values wrong? Um, no, 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 no. Okay, wait. Did I use adds instead of adds with carries? Ah, I know it, I know it, I know it, I know it. Okay, so look at this. Look at this value and this value. They're different by one. One suggests a wrong carry. And I had already gotten something wrong with carries earlier on, where I wasn't using an add with carry here, and I was instead using an add. Here I'm doing the thing the wrong way around because rdx is the high part so first you do the low addition and then you do the high addition with the carry from the low damn it and just for consistency let's swap around those two too um go generate actually how lucky do we feel we feel lucky we feel very lucky. Let's revert this. Revert this. Save. Go generate. Revert this. I will have to redo all of this, of course, to then keep the bugging when this breaks invariably. But. For a second, let me dream of getting it to just pass out right. Doom bitty doom bitty doom pa 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 pa. Bum, ba, bum, ba, bum, 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 bum. Why FE mule not a thing? Oh, right, because we want A and B.
Pa 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 pa. Yes. All right. So we just kind of copy pasted it into FE Mule without making sure it's right. So let's see if that fix also made makes FE Mule work. So we just copy paste the entire thing. This is now entirely AVO generated everything and we just run all the tests. Let's do it. Uh, yeah, I also use, damn it. Interesting. We got the test wrong. That's almost surely what that's saying. So what this is saying is that it's failing the is in bounds. What does is in bounds check? That it's within 52. So the output definitely has to be in bounds. The order value, which is the thing that we generate, might not be guaranteed to be in bounds. No, all weird, all weird limbs are in bounds. And generate field element always masks the low. Also, huh, interesting. Uh, this should uh, be 52 bits here. <laughs> uh, I work on the Go team. Uh, of course, I, I use the mouse for everything. Um, also, I have one of these, which now I'm going to just destroy my setup to try to show you. But um, uh, yeah, this is. I, I'm regretting doing what I'm doing. Oh boy. <laughs> I'm pulling cables. I help. <laughs> Oh boy. So I have one of these, you know, the old people. Uh, not to, like, I feel old in that I already have uh, repeated stress injury from mouses. So this is actually kind of uh, helps a lot. Um, and they're super precise. Um, and Anyway, I also use common D. Um, uh, I also use common D for um, doing multiple selections. But um, sometimes, uh, for example, there I only had letter T, and there was there were other T's on that same line, uh, so uh, common D was not going to work. Okay. I have mouse again. Um, why is this failing? Everything else is passing, so it's really, really just a test. A1 and is equal to A2, and B1 is equal to B2. So what's failing is the is in bounds. What happens if we pull this one off and see what happens? Weird. Um, the th thing that's auto generated is not in bounds. Oh no! Of course it's not. Um, because where? Uh, yeah. 
yep, 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 yep. All right. Uh, <laughs> yep. Cool. Lol. Uh, because carry propagate needs not in bounds values uh, because that's his job. Um, I think this time we're actually using the, the, the actual code. Um, this thing worked. Bloody hell, this thing worked. Like, we can put the dot dot slash here. Remove the asm dot files in there. Um, do a, one last go generate. and run one last go test and it didn't work. Uh, found packages and asm. Yep, that, that doesn't seem right. Huh. Shouldn't it take the package from the package statement? It's very angry that I'm editing an auto-generated file. <laughs> Michael in chat. Oh, crap. Hey, we found a bug. <laughs> um, we also broke something else. Oh, um, right. There, were, there was other stuff in this file. Um, which I guess I will have to split into a separate... Um, uh, stub. Oh, also, we want the no escape stuff. So let's figure out how that, how to make that, which is probably with a, another doc line. Although, no, doc will add a space. Um, how do I do no escape? Surely there's a way because all the assembly does that. So let's see. Uh, pragma? Boom. There we go. <laughs> uh, pragma. Uh, pragma no escape. Oh, we want to add a dash PKG. That makes sense. Um, although, I guess it sh probably should take it from package. I 
adding it to the pile. Um, F is square redeclared in this block. Yeah, the, it... oops. Yep, 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 yep. We're getting extremely close. Rum roll. Boom, baby! This was fun. This was fun. Yes. Uh, cool. So I guess there isn't a way to just add uh, a stub to the stubs file. Probably shouldn't be. There probably shouldn't be. Uh, I'll make a separate function for for this uh, during cleanup. Nice. And sure, why not? Let's do a, a benchmark. Well, we clean up this. Uh, actually, there isn't a lot to clean up. Um, this will run for a while. Um, let's make another. work in progress that I'm not going to use as is because um, we first want to uh, uh, do the nested module um, shenanigans. But I'll push it up so that people can play with it. And then I want to do one last thing. Now that we can do it easily, I want to do the um, pre-computation of some of the values, specifically of these multiplications. Although, oof, they're hidden inside those functions, huh? Uh, oof. Mm. Uh, how do we pass them down into the functions? Maybe we have enough registers. That seems unlikely though. There's 10 in use just here. Uh, we can leave that for another time. The point being that now optimizations on the assembly are easy to review. So if anybody wants to do that, you know, you can send a PR even to the work in progress. I'll, I'll do the rebase. Uh, because now I am uh, willing to review that. It's probably not worth going to the stack. It will take longer to go to memory than it takes to um, to do a store in memory than it takes to do a multiplication. Especially with uh, pipelining. Oh, hey, we have benchmarks. Uh. 
Yep, that looks like noise. Uh, actually, you know, no, that might be real. Um, mole might have gotten 2% faster. Uh, maybe through more pipelineable use of um, of registers or through the more straightforward um, shift right first then mask, which is probably very much more pipelineable. Uh, so, hey, 2% uh, performance. Well, 1.5% performance as a treat. Isn't that nice? Damn, I'm proud of this. And psyched about Avo because, yeah, I mean, let's be honest, this is not um, this is not me. What I'm proud of is this, uh, but th the rest is Michael. Nice. All right, cool. Hmm. Fun. Uh, I'll probably package this up into actual code that I'm pushing upstream. Uh, send uh, send out a, a code review request to um, George Tankersley, who wrote the original assembly, to um, uh, Mike, if you want. Uh, and then once it's merged there, then make the CL to merge it back into the standard library. This was fun. It's also 11 p.m. and I haven't had dinner, so I'll get on that. Folks, thanks for the uh, company. And uh, as usual, uh, subscribe on, on Twitch to get the notification when I do completely un unplanned and unscheduled because I'm terrible at keeping schedules uh, streams. And I have a newsletter, which is also... Is this right? Maybe. Uh, which is also... Uh, not very much regular, but this kind of cryptography engineering and being either excited about stuff or sad about things that are uh, broken. Any questions? Now is the time. Go eat. Yeah, that's that 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 is a good point. <laughs> Exclamation point and seconded. All right, I feel like that um, <laughs> that that's a clear message. Um, and I think. Oh, my flatmate left me a, um, uh, left me some food ready. Oh, nice. Um, oh, um, Michael is asking if uh, this will be available to link um, from the um, Avo README. No, but I have a recording. Um, so there's going to be a VOD uh, video on demand on Twitch, but those last 90 days. Uh, I keep the recordings of everything, and I always say that I will upload them, and I never do. Um, so, you know, I'll, I, I'll say that I will upload it, and it will probably not happen unless you bug me at some point. But if you bug me, it will most definitely happen, because I do have a file... Uh, somewhere that probably hopefully didn't get corrupted when those two uh, blips happened um, and I can upload that on uh, on YouTube and um, and you can link uh, link it so cool folks thanks for company and this was fun uh, landing in a go 117 release uh, uh, near you Um, could, could also use YouTube YL. Yes, you can also download the um, uh, video on demand. And um, I'm smiling just because uh, YouTube DL was uh, my first um, open source project. Uh, I didn't make YouTube DL, but I was a, a maintainer for a couple of years, which was nice um, and very much got me started and then got me into Recurse, which arguably got me into everything else. 
So super grateful to that project and um, very, very happy about the tricks uh, I did to make plugins uh, possible. And that also means that, yeah, when the uh, RIA tried to go after YouTube DL was fun. Uh, and on that note, bye. <laughs>